the Cubs applauding the card sweep. Chicago began the day three back of Milwaukee at Cincinnati, but facing Aaron a rank five and zero oh in his last 12 starts. And Derek Lee didn't get the memo. Top one, his tenth, and the Cubs are up two nothing. And Harang, he'd leave the game after one lower back soreness and. Replaced by Mike Gosling and Alfonso Soriano in the top of the second with two on outset. Three run homer first to two on the day. Soriano three hits five RBI from the leadoff spot. Chicago 22 and nine in its last 31. They win eight one and the Cubs are clearly raising the bar. They're on the verge of catching the Brewers after trailing Milwaukee by as many as eight and a half games on June 23rd. All right, I got a whole nother race for you. The AL Central Tigers lead down to a half game. Detroit in Anaheim and Megley Ordonez batting 6.09 again, six games against the Angels this year. Does not let up. Score tied top six with one on his 16th. That was off Joe Saunders. It's 3-1. Garrett Anderson tie game in the bottom of the eighth. And he goes yard or does he? Do the Angels lead 6-3? Jim Leland is gonna argue that this should be a ground rule double and here's why. The fan reaches out, very undued, but the home run would stand. Same inning, Reggie Willits, Chopper, Placido Polanco, the throw home to catcher Mike Ribello. A uh, fumble! Jeff Mathis all the way from second. Ribello, he couldn't hold on to the ball, and the Angels up 7-3 in the same inning. Orlando Cabrera, uh, Jose Capion, a two-run shot. The Angels score seven in the eighth. Detroit fifth loss in its last six games. The Indians began the day a half game behind the Tigers. They took on the Twins. Jason Tyner, former Met, now not so bad. Zero homers and 1,220 career at bats. Longest active streak in Major League Baseball. Dwayne Kuyper had the most career at bats with exactly one homer. That would be 3,379 at bats. All right, let's move it up with me, time uh, machine. Top of the third, no score. You want to go back to reality? Yeah, Tyner, thank you. Against Jake Westbrook, Tyner. Yes, there it is, his first career homer. In fact, he was the only player in this game with more than one hit. Johan Santana looking to get Minnesota its first win against the Indians this season. Let's see, he got up to that great start with a 2-0 lead, bottom five, getting Travis Hafner swinging. Then Ryan Garko, two outs. And then next batter, Peralta, as in Johnny Peralta. Santana strikes out the side in the fifth. Fifth, he had 12 Ks in seven innings, but here in the seventh, long drive. Travis Hafner, two run home run off of Santana. You know, Hafner, four of his six career hits off of Santana. Guess what, our homers? That was his 17th of the year. Time the game at two. Still tied in the ninth. Runners on the corners for Brian Boucher. On the ground, Mike Rouse throws to the plate. The throw is high. Torrey Hunter scores the winning one for the Twins, and Cleveland remains a half game back at Detroit in the Central. All right, Red Sox winners of seven of their last eight, looking to send the Devil Rays to their eighth straight loss. Bottom nine, 6 4 Red Sox. Jonathan Papelbon gives it up to Delman Young right there in the game for John Lester, and then gives it up big time to Johnny Gomes. Two run homer. We've tied it. Papelbon, second blow and save this season. Fourth home run he's given up this season. That surpasses all of last season. There's, there's something about Raymond. The mascot decides to take a nap. Here's what he missed. Red Sox up one, and after a walk to Julio Lugo, er, they were up one after Julio Lugo has walked with the bases loaded, and Kevin Euclid buys insurance, and the Red Sox go on to win it 12-6, your final. On the Rockies, Troy Tulowitzki, eight homers, 16 ribbies, 21 runs in his last 28 games. Rockies up 2-0, and a runner on for Tulowitzki. Off of Brett Tomko, it's gone for his 12th of the year, and he's got the fourth most home runs among NL rookies. Rockies up 4-0. Jeff Francis pitched a solid game for Colorado. Top seven, two on, two out, gets Russell Martin. Francis, seven to two thirds, two in runs, five Ks, not a single walk. Bottom seven, Rockies up three, no runners on, two out, Garrett Atkins. 15th home run of the year. Matt Holliday also went deep. Tonko drops to two and eight, and Jeff Francis wins his sixth straight decision. Well, Arizona began the day just one back of the Dodgers. You can do the math. The Diamondbacks looking for their eighth straight win. Doug Davis, 69 walks, most in the National League, and he's true to form in the top of the fourth with the Braves down three. Walks Chipper Jones. A couple batters later, he walks Jeff Francoeur, and then Matt Diaz doubles to the corner, and the two fellas he walked. Well, they come home to haunt him, and all of a sudden it's a 3-2 game. Now, two batters later, runner on third, two outs. John Smoltz is on deck. He's a career buck 64 hitter, so they say, let's walk Julio Franco to get to Smoltz, and what's John Smoltz do? Raise that average! 
Off the glove of Matt Mark Reynolds and Diaz scores. Smoltz the hit. 60th career RBI. Fifth most among active pitchers. Okay, bottom 10. Tied. Two on. Connor Jackson at the plate. Before we see what he did, let's have a legal flashback. Thursday, Eric Burns, Captain Ken's favorite player. 0-2 pitch off Armando Benitez. Diamondbacks beat the Marlins in the ninth. And then Tony Clark's homer on Friday. Bottom of the 11th off Will Ledesma. Diamondbacks, another walk-off. Snap back to reality. Uh-oh, there goes gravity. Connor Jackson, he is now. Chris Young scores. Arizona wins. More importantly, though, who's now? The NL East leading Mets hosting the Nationals for two. El Duque, Orlando Hernandez on the man in the first game. Nationals down one nothing. Felipe Lopez just drills it. His sixth homer of the year, tying the score at one. El Duque was outstanding, though, going seven. That was the only earned run he allowed. He struck out eight, bottom seven, still tied. Not anymore. Ruben Gotai lines one. He had an RBI. Delgado and Millage also with RBIs. Mets go on to win three to one. Gotai two for four in that game. How about the second game? Let's go to the bottom of the six. Mets down three to one. They were down three nothing. One on two out. Meeting on the mound with starting pitcher Joel Hanrahan making his ML debut. So much for that meeting doing anything. Carlos Delgado did that. Two run homer off a Hanrahan fastball. Tying the game at three. Delgado 17th. But the Nationals were up four to three. Top of the eighth. Aaron Holman with a bags full. Holman was pitching well until Batista that happened. Bonnie Belliard takes advantage. Batista scores. So does Langerhans. Nationals go on to win. They're 13 and 11 in the month of July. All right, the Phillies were four back of the Mets when the sun rose, so they can cut that to three and a half if they can beat the Pirates and Shane Yeoman. Bottom first, scoreless game, one on for Jimmy Rollins. He doubles deep to left center. And Shane Victorino, this is what a diet of poi will do for you. He's got his wheels on, and Ryan Domit, you better duck his Maui no coy. Victorino knocks the ball away, and it's one nothing Phillies. Bottom five, game tied, not anymore. Chris Coast off Masumi Kuwata, bartender. Suck. Phillies going to win 10-5. Padres and Astros, Carlos Lee, five homers in his last 11 games. Bottom one, tie game at one, facing Greg Maddox, gone. Home run number 22 on the year for Lee. Boy, is he stroking. It's 3-1 Astros. Top seven, Jeff Blum batting against Roy Oswald. And Oswald had it going on, looking for career win number 108, which would rank him fourth all-time on the Astros win list. He gets it. Astros win. Greg Maddox winless streak stretches to six starts. The Giants host of the Marlins. Bonds two home runs away from breaking the career mark means he needs one to tie. Dontrell Willis, you see no homers allowed versus left-handed hitters in 83 at bats. Barry Bonds limited numbers against Dontrell. One for three, the one a single. He'd also walk and four walks and a whiff. First at bat, Giants up one and Bonds now has taken two strikes. Didn't like the first one and swings and misses at the inside fastball on the one two pitch and Dontrell Willis strikes out Bonds. Willis lost his last seven straight decisions. Said I'm throwing fastballs to him prior to this game before catching him himself and say you don't want to tell him what your attack is and Bonds talking to Ray Durham about what that attack was. Second at bat the Giants now down 3-1 runner on second for Bonds and Willis sticks to the game plan fastball up and inside ball one and then Bonds is jammed on the next pitch and it's high but it is not far and Dan Ugla is under it and Willis well, he's working Bonds with the fastballs and Barry says, man, you're coming at me. I got I appreciate that. There's Barry's daughter taking pictures of daddy, looking for some history. And 3-0 count to Bonds and Willis. Fastball inside, called strike. So we've got 3-1, another fastball outside. Look at Don Trell. He, he was going for the challenge of Barry Bonds, career leader in walks. Walks looking to be the career leader in home runs. Giants down 3-2. Bottom seven runners on first and second. And again, Bonds. Hits it high, this on the first pitch, and Matt Trainer under it. Bonds jammed again, and Dontrell fired up. Bonds 0 for 3 at this point. We go to the bottom of the ninth, 3-2 game. Dave Roberts was going on the pitch. Kevin Gregg from Corvallis can't get him. Mark Sweeney pinch hitting. And Dave Roberts all the way from first. This ball game is tied, and Barry Bonds says, I might have a chance to get up again. And Bonds is on the on-deck circle with Ray Durham at the stick against Greg. And Barry Bonds is going to have to wait till Sunday because Ray Durham ends this one sixth career game-ending hit. 
The Giants win. Dan Schulman, Oral Hershey, and Steve Phillips. We're at this ball game. Sitting on 499 Yanks in Baltimore. Roger Clemens making his 700th start, and he's making it against Brian Burris. Let's compare Clemens' 347 more wins than Brian Burris entering the day. The largest difference in career victories between opposing starters in any major league game since 1965 when Warren Spahn's 362 wins faced Darryl Sutherland's one career win. Derek Jeter goes down swinging against Burris. Bobby Abreu just watching. A-Rod, forget about it. Bottom one, two on, two out. What about the Rocket? Clemens on the mound. Miguel Tejada in the box. Tejada. Up the baseline, that sends Brian Roberts and Nick Markakis home. Orioles up 2-0. Tejada 2 for 4. He had 4 ribbies against the Yankees. Top of the 6 is a 3-0 game. Yankees down. We got a full count. Burris facing Alex Rodriguez. Is this the time? No. Ramon Hernandez throws out Derek Jeter trying to steal second. Double play to end the inning. Let's go to the top of the 8. Danny Baez now pitching to A-Rod. No contest. Rodriguez 0 for 4 with 3 K. Still at 499 to the ninth. Yanks score 4 in the ninth. Cut it to 2. Jeter on second, A-Rod on deck, Bobby Abreu at the plate, usually a good eye around the plate, but not here, not now. Orioles win, they improved to 6-2 and two against the Yanks this season. Always looking for their first winning season against the Yanks in 10 years. Two thrilling finish in the opener at Bush. St. Louis nine games back on Milwaukee heading into the twin build. Top one scoreless, Ryan Braun, two outs. Oh, baby, Braun's 18th. You know, he's got 18 homers since being called up May 25th. Only Ryan Howard has more homers during that span in the National League. Skip Schumacher tries to check it. Third base on Greg Gibson said he went around and then Gibson, oh, he wastes no time. He ejects Tony La Russa for arguing the call from the dugout. And La Russa says, hey, let me plead my case. And Charlie Relaford steps in between La Russa and Gibson. La Russa exits with his team down by three. You know, they were down by six, but in the ninth, Francisco Cordero on to close. Much better at home that ERA. Cardinals down two, but he's on the road. Albert Pujols, runner on second, one out. Pujols, money. Chris Duncan scored. Suddenly, it's 6-5. Cardinals down just one. Two batters later, Scott Rowland up with two outs. Rowland off of Cadero. Are you kidding me? Pass Jeff Jenkins to the wall. Juan Encarnacion, who was three for five, comes around to score. We're tied. Cordero's second consecutive, blown save, and then Ryan Ludwig. Pass Craig Council. Here comes Scott Rowland. Jenkins, the throw home, play at the plate. Rowland saves Cardinals. Win it. A Ludwig with a walk-off single. They come back from six runs down. Let's go to game two. Anthony Reyes on the hill for the Cardinals. 0-10 to start the season. Did you know that the last pitcher to start a season, I knew this, 0-11, was Anthony Young of the Mets in 1993. Young actually began that year 0-13. Who can forget that? Reyes with a 3-1 lead facing Ryan Braun with one out. That's strong. Next batter, Prince Fielder. Whoa. Reyes goes six, two hits, two earned runs allowed, four Ks, his first win of the year. And Cardinals sweep Milwaukee. Together we start at number 10, Twins Indians, Victor Martinez, Chopper. Where's Arnold? Joe Nathan. Out in midair, makes the throw to first for the out. The Twins win 3-2. Cleveland remains a half game behind Detroit. Number nine, Chase Stadium, Nationals, Mets, game one. Jose Reyes. Foul pop-up. Wyatt Church, basket catch. More from this game later. It was that incredible. Evian Masters, round three at number eight. Diana DeLacio with the great shot of the 17th hole, and it stops right at the tip of the cup. Alessio shoots 72. She's three shots off the lead. Back to game one of the Nats Mets. Austin Kearns testing Sean Green. He can do so much. Can Green take another look? Yep. Mets win three to one. Look like Benny Ogbayani out there at number six. Yankees Orioles. Bobby Abreu. A little better than that. Fly ball the right easy. Nick Markakis lives on Glove Street. The Orioles win seven five. Number five. U.S. Junior Amateur Corey Whitsitt overcame an early two hole deficit by winning five straight holes in an 8-7 win over Anthony Paolucci. That would be Paolucci to win the U.S. Junior Amateur Championship. Wits had also became just the fifth 15-year-old to win the title, joining Tiger Woods and others. Braves Diamondbacks at number four. Chris Snyder grounded to third. Chipper Jones. Great stop, long throw. Take another look. Chipper and the Braves get the highlight, but the Diamondbacks get another win. They are hot. Number three, Brewers Cardinals, Craig Council. It's shallow, David Eckstein. Over the shoulder catch. I need about three more looks. There's one, two, one more. Thanks. Cardinals win five to two. It actually swept that twin bill. All right, we got the League Cup final for Germany. Bayern Munich gonna get the win after close up. 
Incredible. Look at the defenders grabbing him. Oh, that's incredible. And he doesn't give up on the play. 1 0 wins it. Sixth time they got the League Cup. You know incredible. That? Now I know it. Now I know this. Padres Astros, number one, Mike Lamb. Mike Cameron. Great leaping catches. It crashes into the wall. Former Mets, still good. Mike Cameron. Padres lose 3 to 1.